Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I am super excited to have a solo episode with you guys today, spend this time with you. Before we get into the topic, I want to know where are we together right now? Where am I with you? Are we on our way to work right now? Are we picking up the kids from school? Are we winding down for the day, cooking, working out, on a walk? Where where are we together? Find me on social media, tag me at Elevate Your Life Podcast, and let me know. I love to know where you guys are tuning in from. Right now, this is my home office in Boca Raton, and we are recording here on this beautiful afternoon. It is yet to rain, so we're good to go. Um, today's subject this topic um, hit me like a ton of bricks actually a couple weeks ago during my husband's and I recent move. And really what propelled this subject was coming to the realization of my operating system. And it occurred to me how on autopilot we are with our habits, with our way of operating. We don't even realize the impact it has on other people. And, you know, we go throughout life without really sometimes those moments where you can just take that step back and say, whoa, this is working. This is not working, right? When was the last time you evaluated? Is this working for me? Is this supporting me in the best way for my goals or what I'm trying to accomplish here at hand? And if not, how can you redirect yourself? How can you gently say, you know what? We're going to do things differently moving forward. A lot of times when I receive the notifications on my phone to upgrade my my new software or there's a new version available, right, to download, I I procrastinate. I'm that person that's, oh, I'll do it later. Or, oh, the operating system that I currently have is working just fine. When was the last time you upgraded your operating system? How often are you pushing the button to procrastinate on that? So that is what today's subject is all about. And I'm going to give you three steps, okay? Three easy steps on how to walk through this process to elevate yourself to meet your next new standard, your next and improved operating system. Are you with me? Okay, so this is going to be a game changer for you because if you don't have a process in place like I didn't, And then I became so obsessed with, okay, this is not working for me. I need some, I need to do something better for myself. Um, I've narrowed it down to three easy things. Okay. And it's going to create less resistance for you. It's going to create more ease, less anxiety, more peace and more presence. Okay. So first and foremost, identify, become aware Do you even know what your operating system is? Do you know what your system preferences are? Do you know what your habits are when a situation is presented to yourself, how you are going to respond based on your immediate reaction or your your innate response system? Do you know? I know mine. It it occurred to me (laughs) very viciously as I moved out of our big home without any proper planning. So I went into full panic, chicken with their head cut off, trying to pack six rooms at once. And truthfully, are you packing anything at all? No. So I quickly stripped myself of, okay, stop, refresh, and do this. So become aware And that was a great moment for me to reflect back to myself what was not working. So what moments in your life can you reflect on that are just not working? Or you can say to yourself, you know, this could have been done differently. And I see that now. That awareness is the first step. Without that awareness, there's nothing to look at. You won't even know where to begin. So first identify what is your operating system. Okay. And then What within that operating system do you know can be done differently to create more ease in your life? So, um, and then recognizing the difference between your true nature and what habits are learned out of fight or flight survival mode. 
self-protection mode. We have these natural instincts that come out of us, out of you know pure survival mode, pure fight or flight mode, pure protection mode. But those things perhaps are going to be protecting you and keeping you in your comfort zone, but they're not actually going to be supporting you to get through the tough stuff, to get through the next stage of your life, to get through the next challenge, to get through the next hard conversation, to get you through to the next promotion, to get you through the next stage of your child's maybe development, to get you through whatever it is that you have in front of you that you're looking to get past, that you're looking to grow through. We're not meant to stay the same. Every time I see my son, every day that I see him, I watch him, he's pushing the boundaries. He's pushing the boundaries because he's going to get bored of where he's at and he wants to grow and explore and find the next thing and expand his horizons. But as adults, we stop all of that altogether because we get so comfortable staying with what we know. The little do we actually know that we're dying slowly and deteriorating little by little by us doing that each day. So I encourage you identify right now, where are your boundary lines? Where is that line that you, you don't step out of because that's, that's your response. That's, that's your comfort zone. You're not comfortable responding any which way other than this. Okay. And then also recognize what is your true nature? What makes you come alive? What makes you feel more connected? At the end of the day, I will 100% choose connection over comfortability. Connected means having those hard conversations to let the, the voices of your soul come out, which may be hard, which may be difficult, which may be contrary to the voices of comfortability which know exactly what to do in the scenario, which know exactly how to show up, but is it actually helping you progress in the direction that you want to go and create the outcome that you're looking for? Maybe, maybe not. So recognizing where your true nature lies and also where you would feel more connected lies. So begin to ask yourself, In order to feel more connected, what do I need to do? Instead of saying, well, this is the exact way that I know how to do this, which will keep you in that comfort zone. What would make me feel more connected? Connected to your soul, connected to your true nature. And becoming aware of those habits, you must evaluate. This is the number one key to not being on autopilot. Okay? Autopilot are those Other things we just talked about, being in survival mode, being in self-protection mode, that's all autopilot. You know how to do that like it's the back of your sleep, like, or sorry, like it's the back of your hand. Okay, you can do all of those things in your sleep, but what you can't do is recognize what would make you feel more connected unless you begin to ask yourself that. So step one, okay, you must change your thought process around your identity because your identity is your habits. Your identity is the things that you do, not anything else. So begin to identify where your habits lie and are they matching the person that you want to be? Because if the person that you want to be isn't the things that you're actually doing, how can you create more alignment, more connectivity to that in itself? A couple of things that help me identify true nature is recognizing maybe some personality tests. Um, I love the human design. Um, Also like the Enneagram. Enneagram is a great one as well. Use them as your tools in your toolbox to really just help you fine tune yourself. Okay, in your true nature. Once you've identified all those things and you've evaluated where you want to be more connected, okay, where you want to expand those comfort zones and the habits that you want to begin um, performing so that you can become more of that person that you want to be, you must, number two, give yourself grace. Okay, we are all human. We all have hormones and we have a second brain in the body that is our gut, which controls our mood based on the foods that we eat, 
based on how much movement we have or don't have. And so you have to give yourself grace. Okay. If you're looking for perfection, you're going to fail. You're going to set yourself up for failure pretty much. Okay. You have to give yourself realistic goals and expectations of what you want out of yourself. You're not going to tell your child something once and expect them to remember it and do it perfectly there from here on out. It's just not going to happen. You have to give them realistic expectations and grace and gentle parenting. So give yourself grace and gently guide yourself along this new path. Okay. This way it doesn't discourage you the second you fail or one day you didn't, you know, do something that you said you were going to do. Now all of a sudden, you know, you flunked yourself out and you have no more motivation to get up the next day and try again. So give yourself some breathing room here. Okay. We all I'm sure have busy lives. You've got a hectic schedule. The last thing you need is to beat yourself up because you failed on this one thing, or, you know, you didn't do it perfectly. So give yourself grace. And I keep coming back to that word because we're always so hard on ourselves. We are our biggest critics. And the last person you need to be a critic over is yourself. The longest relationship you will ever have in your whole life is with yourself. The most unconditional relationship you will have in your entire life is yourself. But yet we abandon ourselves. We criticize ourselves. We judge ourselves. We deplete ourselves. We sabotage ourselves. So let this be your permission slip to know that the one person you don't have to do that with is yourself. Because you can't count on anybody else, unfortunately, to love you the way you're going to love yourself. To love you the way you know that you need to be loved. To show up for you the way that you know you need showing up for to cook you the food that you know your body needs to eat and would feel good. To put on those sneakers because you know walking outside or getting in a workout or moving your body is exactly what you need. No one else can do it for you except you. And so let this step two be one of the most important steps because without giving yourself that permission slip, you won't stay consistent with anything. You're not going to show up for yourself because you're going to fail the second you, you don't wake up early for that alarm clock. Or, you know, let's say you do put the procrastinate button on and you procrastinate on your next upgrade. And then a year is going to go by and then two years going to go by and all these excuses are going to come up. So take a hold of that and tell yourself it is okay. It is okay. Okay. You're going to get, wake up tomorrow morning and start fresh and all is well. Okay. So you must become your biggest advocate and your greatest cheerleader. And I'm here to be your accountability partner because I see you and I get you. I see you and I get you. Number three. Number three is my favorite because it is what I've been practicing with the most. And it's already created more presence and peace in my life, I'm someone who, I don't want to say suffers from anxiety, but I experience anxiety. And that is because of the pressure that I put on myself, which causes me to feel overwhelmed a lot. And like, I have so many things to do, such little time for nothing at the end of the day, but that's not actually true. That's a lie. And that's the narrative I've been selling myself, which I'm no longer buying into. So number three is what narrative must you no longer buy into and begin to prioritize your life and all of that it encompasses within. So what I mean by that is I want you to brain dump, brain dump, brain dump all of the open tabs that you have on right now. Okay. On your computer screen, how many open tabs do you have? I want you to brain dump at the beginning of the week all of your tasks, all of your appointments, all of your meetings, all of the things that you need to accomplish by the end of the week, okay? All of your workouts that you want to have, the dinners you're going to make, everything brain dump. So 
the less you have to think about as your week goes on, the better because you've already brain dumped it. You don't have to think about it anymore. Then you're going to prioritize everything based on when you're going to do it. It's like playing, playing Tetris <laughs> with all of your tasks and then putting them to each day. Okay. So this task will get done on Monday. This appointment's happening on Tuesday and everything will begin to work around within your schedule. If it is not scheduled, it's not happening. If it's not penciled in, it's not happening. So pencil it in, have a slot for it. It's just like everything in my house. I truly believe everything has a place. If it doesn't have a place, then it goes out the door. Bye. Belongs to somebody else. It's not for here. So find a place for all of your tasks. And if you can't find a place for it, guess what? You're going to push it to the following week. Okay. Don't stress yourself out or put too much on your plate and overwhelm yourself. That's the complete opposite of what we're looking to achieve here. So bring dump all of your appointments, prioritize each day what's going to take place. I like to do this by prioritizing one to three tasks that were major that will be moving the needle. Okay. In your life, in your relationships, in your business, what are those three things? Um, and then from there, create realistic expectations and deadlines. So sometimes things may take longer to accomplish than others. They, you know, you may find some procrastination around actually completing that task. So do the hardest one first. Okay. And show up excited, show up ready. This is your 2.0 version of yourself. Okay. You have a built in system of grace. You know, your nature and, and what's going to make you feel connected over being comfortable. And so this has now become something more than you. You're now choosing to, to show up because you'd rather be connected than stay comfortable. So you have to remember your why. And when the going gets tough, this is what's going to help you get through. Okay. Just like, as you're going to show up for your child or anyone that you love in, in their life and be their cheerleader, you must be your own cheerleader in these moments where it's just you. Okay. Now, once you have accomplished that, at this point, you will have it all one day at a time. By the end of the week, you're going to get everything done and feel so accomplished and feel depleted in the best way possible because you've given everything you can to this week without self-sabotage. Okay. Without procrastination without any of the things that you used to do in the old operating system that was bogging you down. And maybe you didn't even get anything accomplished because you were just in this rut. And so with this new way of operating, you have a system now that you can refer back to. Okay. Save this episode. If you need to re-listen to it or take some notes on the nuggets that we've shared here today, but you now have a system and the way that you can successfully move through going from old to new and really upgrading yourself every couple of months. What is a new thing that you want to accomplish? What is a new goal that you have in, in place? What is an, um, a new way that you want, you know, your spouse to see you or your kids to see you, or even yourself to see your, yourself in the way that you're becoming more efficient, more productive, and you're fully optimizing yourself based on your nature. Okay. And I go back to that because you are uniquely created and designed. And if you don't know what those intricacies are within yourself, take time to get to know yourself. Go try something new. Go to a workout class. Go to a paint and sip class. Try to be creative and artistic. Go to, you know, if you live by the beach, go to the morning sunrise, connect to the sun, connect to the beach, the earth. If you are into cooking, go take a cooking class. Try something new to see what drives, what feels good. Talk to a new friend. I met a couple new moms over the weekend as my son was playing and it felt good to make some new friends. We went to a church over the weekend and it felt good to be in church and community. We hadn't gone in a long time because it's not as easy with a little baby anymore, but we still went and it was a, you know, active with our little one walking around everywhere, but it was great to get out and do something different. 
So if you feel like you're stuck in a rut, maybe it's starting somewhere new. Maybe it's trying something new. Maybe it's going somewhere new with your spouse. Maybe this is not just, you know, you upgrading yourself. Maybe this is you upgrading your relationships. Maybe this is you upgrading something within your business. Okay. Um, the key is that you want to ensure that you're developing new habits, that you're continually pushing those boundaries, just like our kids do, that you don't want to become stagnant and stale and then eventually become unhappy because that's what happens as humans. We are, we are designed for growth. We're designed for connectivity. We're designed to create. Okay. So what is it that you can create in your life today? that's going to make you feel more connected. Where can you quiet down the distractions, the temptations? Where do you need to make some decisions in your life that you're procrastinating on that's causing you anxiety, that's causing resistance in your life, that's causing you to slow down and not move forward because you're not making a decision? Where in your life do you need to stay the course? And I'll leave you with this. Success in anything is equivalent to how consistent you're willing to be. So in order to have a successful upgrade, you must stay consistent. Give yourself grace, but get back on the horse. I'm sending you guys so much love today. Please tag me on Instagram. What stood out to you the most here, okay, during this episode? And what new standard are you going to be working towards in your life? What new habit are you going to create? What new thing are you going to go and do? What upgrade are you looking for in your life right now? I want to know. Tell me. Right now, I am working on prioritizing those three things every single day because I want more presence in my life. By prioritizing, I know that I don't have to think about the rest of the stuff. I'm just focusing on these three things and I'm going to do them to their fullest. I'm going to maximize this and it's going to be done and it's going to feel good and everything else will get done throughout the rest of the week. And that allows me to drop in and become present and really surrender everything else. So I'm not thinking about it constantly because if you're like me, you're the type that you just can't sit. You constantly have to be doing something. Literally, I'll be doing things like all day long, all evening long around the house. I'll just keep finding things to do, but that's actually sometimes not good. Sometimes just sitting watching a movie, still doing something and that feels good. So that's what I'm working on. And I know it's going to have a rippling effect in all areas of my life, business, and my relationships. So I encourage you to challenge yourself to become this better and to become this next version of yourself. Push those boundaries, push that level of comfortability. Life when you're comfortable isn't really that great. I'll tell you why. Because you know that you could be doing something that is more fulfilling, more exciting, more thrilling to truly thrive. So I encourage you to choose that version of yourself. You have it in you, but somewhere along the way you chose to not listen. Somewhere along the way you chose to stop loving yourself. Somewhere along the way, that creativity stalled a bit. And that's okay. Because like I said, tomorrow's a new day. The sun will rise. You can choose to wake up with it or not. You can choose to have coffee with yourself or not. You can choose to journal what you're grateful for or not. You can choose again. And you can choose new and you can choose different. And I hope that you choose you. So with that, I pray you have an incredible rest of your day today. I want you to know I will be your accountability partner. So I am looking forward to seeing your tags on Instagram and be sure to share this episode with a friend that you think you want to have on this journey with you of accountability that you believe they too deserve the next upgrade of their life and that we can all upgrade together. So with that, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you here next week. Take care.